you know, this is Hughes' last Wolverine. We have, um, I suppose, more raw, more gritty, more real, more authentic drama, but because of that, when he goes berserk, it's way more berserk than you've ever seen. <laughs> We searched all of Europe, uh, South America, North America, uh, Canada. We were everywhere looking for a um, for an X-23. She's a special girl, completely normal 11-year-old girl. <laughs> Anything outside action and cut, but between action and cut, something extraordinary is going on. We're always kind of searching for some way to kind of make sure an audience knows we're not satisfied. Let's just start with a blank slate and let's make this a standalone movie and make the movie you want to make. Man Wei Super Hero 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 十七年来，已成为金刚狼代名词的修杰克曼，最后一次以狼叔身份亮相大银幕，开启变种人终极守卫战，为系列终章画上悲情句号。一代经典硬汉迎来谢幕演出，修杰克曼风爪之战备受影迷关注。时值新片上映之际，时光网独家专访《金刚狼三：殊死一战》导演詹姆斯·曼高德及狼叔修杰克曼，分享影片幕后创作故事，也揭秘观众前所未见的。木狼传说。I come from the theatre, so in the theatre we have a saying: every show, you treat it like your first and your last. So, as an actor, you have to say everything as, as if it's for the first time. But you want the feeling, and I suppose in your heart, like. This is the last time I'm ever going to do it, and I've always had that feeling about everything. And for me, the characters always had to grow, but I've always felt everyone like, what's the reason to tell another story? Why? What can we do differently? And I think we've done that to various degrees of success. But in this movie, I was like, we have to unearth everything about this character. I want to really. Lift the lid and get deep down and find out who he is. And we have, a, I suppose, more raw, more gritty, more real, more authentic drama. But because of that, when he goes berserk, it's way more berserk than you've ever seen. <laughs> you know, and I think fans are going to love that. I'm gonna count to three, and you're gonna start walking away. Yeah, right to this one. One. I have a lawyer now. Two. Three. Ah, ah. Yeah, that boss. <laughs> You know the drill. We wanted to go deep. We wanted to do something different. You know, this is Hugh's last Wolverine, and God willing, mine as well. And the, uh, and uh, for both of us, the idea was only doing the film if there was a good reason to do the film um, creatively, meaning other than just making money and making another one. And um, and for us, that was very much about. Getting deeper in the character and and trying to deliver for fans something they hadn't seen and been clamoring for, which was an adult Wolverine movie. The reality is that part of our responsibility, I think, part of what makes it a movie is that you bring a different vision to it. You see it a different way and you try it a different way. It's not rejecting anything or putting it away or breaking a timeline, but it's just simply saying, here's this version of the story seen through this filmmaker's eyes. Logan. To go um, more intense, um, not only with the violence or language or anything like that that comes along with an adult rating, but also making a film that's trying not to play to 12-year-olds. That is for adults. I think I really liked the rawness of that. I liked seeing him uh, in a very sort of like vulnerable position in a way because I think. There's so much focus on the claws, his healing ability. For for me, and I think for fans, what has really made him extraordinary and relatable, and why people love him and badass is the human qualities to him.、Mm. I mean, 
on paper, he's not the most powerful mutant out there. Right. But he's the last person you want to piss off. This is like a grown-up drama that happens to be about superheroes that right. kick ass, as opposed to a kind of high-octane action romp with some new guest star playing a villain with fire that comes out of his <laughs> earlobes. The, the, you, you just have, it's a very real story, and it's driven not by any supervillain or threat to the universe, but by the actual struggle of the characters and what they're frightened of, what they're hoping for. Come on. Which, you know, we've gone even a little younger than right. I think, than, than people expect. It's actually now, if I think about it now, after making the movie, near on impossible. If there's one thing about Jim Mangold, and if you think back to Angelina Jolie and Girl Interrupted, or what he did with Stallone and Copland, or, or, you know, he, apart from being a brilliant director, brilliant writer, has an eye for spotting talent. And when he sent me a tape of Daphne, so Daphne had sent a tape from Spain where she lived, uh, lives and he and it was just so clear we were like oh my god so when we, she flew in to do an audition it was even more clear she's a special girl completely normal 11 year old girl <laughs> anything outside action and cut but between action and cut something extraordinary is going on and she's amazing and is going to have a, a long long future um that was a huge search um the the that ended in madrid in the case with daphne we searched all of europe uh south america north america um canada we were everywhere looking for a um for an x23 and um because she's made in a lab and we, in our story, we imagine that lab was south of the border. Mm -hmm. We wanted a Latino. So the idea that they're, the idea in this lab is that they're growing these mutant cloned children in the bellies of Mexican girls. Um, oh, wow. And um, it's dark. And so each one of these kids is effectively um, half Mexican and half mutant. I love the idea that Logan is having to deal with fatherhood, only it's not sweet. It's difficult and awkward and he loses his temper and she loses his temper and guess what? They both have adamantium claws. So <laughs> guess what? She's yeah. got a little milk. She's, you know, <laughs> just before that Hugh Jackson, she's eating cereal. Uh, it makes me Are laugh. you worried that she's going to steal the film from you? There's no such thing. <laughs> There's no such thing. There's film, uh, you know, I am... I suppose I'm the lead. I'm the. Well, you're, you're the yeah, yeah, you're the, the title character. Right. But if you're the captain of the team, you want everyone to play out of their skin. And in this film, everyone literally leaves it on the mat and plays out of their skin. And what you very much have is a story between Charles and Logan of a father and son. You know, um, an aging father who needs care. Um, one of the interesting things in the film is, you know, Charles Xavier has got some kind of bre degenerative brain disease. And what happens when the world's most powerful brain has a de degenerative brain disease and he can't control what his mind is doing at all times? Um, he's almost like a bomb waiting to go off. And so Logan is, we find Logan living with him kind of on the edge of, of civilization in the Mexican desert, trying to, in a way, to both protect Charles and protect people from Charles. We got ourselves an X-Men fan. Maybe a quarter of it happened, and not like this. In the real world, people die. Logan. I don't want to talk about it. Logan. Just stop. Be careful. We have one scene in the movie, it's maybe four or five minutes long, where I think there's more nuance and drama in that scene in our relationship than maybe the other six or movies mm. we've done together combined. It's just such a different take on his character and on our relationship that it kind of felt fresh. It felt like nothing we've ever done before and we really had a chance to kind of uh, go for a run in the paddock as actors and it was absolutely very special. I've known him almost that long, right. and we've made three movies together. The, uh, the reality is that um, it works both ways. You know, in terms of the basic 
moves and how he fights and his skills as a, as a fight choreographer and as being able to use those claws, um, it's unparalleled level of experience um, and proficiency. I mean, it's incredible how fast you can show him an idea for a fight sequence and he can execute it. Um, and the stunt coordinators and the stunt people will all go like, it's like having just a stunt person as your star. And um, but on top of that, there's also the other challenge for us is that he's done it so many times, but we have to both be watching that we're not falling back on the old tricks. Right. You know, like, ah, I think we've done this <sighs> a little too, you know, I got that. Uh, let's do it a different way. Let's find another way in that isn't doing the same old. And, the, and I think that in many ways, we're always kind of searching for some way to kind of make sure an audience knows we're not satisfied. But one thing I know about Jim, in his DNA, he's a writer as much as a director. So every time I've worked with him, we've inherited a script. So on the, the, the Wolverine, we inherited a script, and here we had this blank canvas, literally blank canvas. And I, I really, I, w I would love people to know how supportive, too, the studio were, and all the people involved, as invested as we all are, they were like, let's just start with a blank slate and let's make this a standalone movie and make the movie you want to make. Said, of course you have to have a genre. When you make Deadpool that you're making something with this kind of wacky energy, that is its own genre. When you with Guardians, this is its own kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark kind of jaunty genre. Dark Knight is its own noirish kind of um, 40s German expressionist genre. The, and so each one of the most successful of these films actually has already done that. I think the point is that, yes, Western, yet whatever it is, pick something. To be really honest, the, the inspiration for me was more Unforgiven, the movie, which was the inspiration for that comic book. Right. Like, if you look at that comic book after watching Unforgiven, you'll see it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> very, very yeah. closely. Mm. Because I think relying upon the formula of just kind of a comic book movie, uh, I mean, all it really means is people in spandex and a big right. meeting in a room with a conference table and people saying, how are we going to stop him? I mean, I'm kind of like, I'm so over that if that's what the genre is. And then a big last 12 minutes of $12 million in CG, tsunami, city-destroying spectacle. And um, I think we all need to look at kind of classic forms and templates and allow these characters, you know, Star Wars, you could argue, is a Western more than it is science fiction. And um, the forms of the Western and the forms of these genre really can guide us. Last question I want to ask you, Ryan Reynolds seems yes. desperate to do yeah. a Deadpool Wolverine movie. Yeah. Is that just going to be off the table now? I'm just going to be honest. Ryan has you know, he's got some power now. Oh, he's yeah. very powerful, and he just doesn't like hearing the word no. <laughs> uh, so, no, man. <laughs> That's official. No. <laughs> no, Ryan. <laughs>